depending on who you listen to online, you will either hear that you must supplement calcium or that calcium supplements are super dangerous and will calcify your arteries and organs. So who is right and is calcium good or bad? That's what I want to discuss in this video to help you decide for yourself and to see through all the confusing information out there. The reason I made this video is because there's a lot of conflicting advice online about calcium supplementation. On the one hand, you have calcium deficiency often being named as one of the most common deficiencies in the world. For example, everyone knows osteoporosis and many women are told that once they enter menopause, they need to supplement calcium to avoid it. But then on the other hand, you also have a lot of health bloggers telling you to never take calcium supplements, usually because of the risk of tissue calcification. Tissue calcification is a buildup of calcium in the body, for example, in your arteries or organs that can harden over time and actually lead to cell death in the tissue. So with all this conflicting information, what do you do? Should you supplement calcium or not? To answer this question, you need to realize that even though everyone thinks in terms of excess or deficiency, the key to calcium in your body is actually bioavailability. Bioavailability refers to how much of a nutrient your body can actively use and work with. So for example, how much of it can transport around or push in and out of cells. Certain nutrients are more difficult to keep bioavailable than others. For example, because they need to be bound to a carrier protein to be usable or because of the biological properties of the nutrient itself. And calcium is one of those nutrients. And I already talked about the main reason it can become problematic. When calcium ions cluster, they can harden over time and form deposits. Let me give you an example. In muscle cells, calcium should be found mostly outside the cell. When you contract a muscle, calcium then rushes into the cell to trigger the contraction. To push calcium out again and relax the muscle, you need magnesium. If there isn't enough magnesium available, calcium will build up inside the cell and overstimulate it. You then get overly tense muscles and long term it can even lead to cell death. This buildup can be life-threatening in the heart and arteries because it restricts blood flow. Another example would be that of oxalic acid. It's an organic acid produced in the body and also found in certain plants like beets. It binds to calcium and also favors buildup when you have too much of it. It's one of the main reasons why people who consume a lot of beets have a higher likelihood of developing kidney stones. What I'm trying to say here is that even though we want to avoid tissue calcification, calcium itself is not the danger. Its potential for biounavailability is. Keep in mind that calcium is an essential mineral. It's important for bone growth and development, for muscle movement and electrolyte function. And it's also a great nutrient to calm your nervous system. So calcium avoidance isn't the answer. The most common problem we see isn't actually a deficiency or a calcium excess. It's both at the same time. So you have people who show signs of tissue calcification and bone demineralization at the same time. That means too much unusable calcium in the wrong places and not enough usable calcium in the right places. This brings me back to calcium supplements. The right supplementation should always be viewed through the lens of bioavailability. So you want to avoid or reverse calcification, but also supply enough of it for the body to work with. The basic requirements for this are one magnesium, because magnesium pushes calcium out of the cell and keeps it moving. Two, sufficient sodium and potassium levels. That's because both are solvents that keep calcium in solution. As a side note, this is why potassium is given for kidney stones. And keep in mind that sodium and potassium levels are governed mainly by our adrenal glands and not our dietary intake. So you definitely want to support adrenal function for this. And lastly, you have cofactor nutrients like K2, vitamin D, and boron. Now, please don't go out and just buy supplements for all these nutrients. They need to be balanced against each other to work properly. For example, too much vitamin D will further increase your calcium overload because it increases calcium uptake in the stomach. 
I explain how to test and balance nutrients against each other in a different video, so definitely check that out. During this whole process of fixing your nutrient deficiencies, excesses and imbalances, you might also need a calcium supplement. That means to answer the question of this video, so if calcium supplements are good or bad depends on your individual case. As you progress, your body will become better at eliminating excess calcium and also at keeping calcium from your diet bioavailable. But some people still need calcium supplements on top for optimal results. For example, when I started taking magnesium and potassium, I got crazy side effects like heart palpitations and muscle twitching. Now, both nutrients are calcium antagonists, so they further lower your calcium. I had to balance this with a small dose of a calcium supplement to counteract these side effects. Now again, this is individual and has to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Normally, the optimal ratio of calcium supplements to magnesium supplements is between 1 to 1 to 2 to 1, with my ideal ratio being around 1.5 to 1. The bottom line is that when you work on improving your calcium bioavailability through the right cofactor nutrients, then supplementing normal doses of calcium is generally not a risk and sometimes necessary. If, however, you blindly take a high-dose calcium supplement by itself and your calcium metabolism is messed up because you also lack the cofactor nutrients and your adrenals aren't working right, then the additional calcium supplement will add to your problem and become a risk. Okay, to wrap up this video, I hope you now understand why telling people to completely avoid calcium supplements or to always supplement isn't the answer. You have to know your own nutritional profile and then work on improving it. Seeing calcium through the lens of bioavailability will help you with that. In the developed world, just having an excess or just a deficiency is fairly rare. Usually it's a bioavailability problem. To fix that, I will link videos that talk about calcium metabolism and nutrient testing, so make sure to check them out. I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one.